what it says I can have, I can do what it says I can do. It is inerrant, infallible, incorruptible. Today, I will be taught the word of God that will go into the soul of my heart and produce not 30, not 60, but 100 fold. I decree my mind is attentive. My heart is receptive. I shall, I must, I will be changed in Jesus' name. Now, if you believe that, praise him. Woo. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Today, we're continuing our teaching on the reality of hell, the reality of hell, part four. Have you been blessed so far? Last week, we talked about why would a loving God send people to hell? Now, you got to go back and, and get that. You got to go back and get all the previous messages. We said, why would God create a place of torment last week? Why would he create hell? What's the place? Uh, last week, well, you know what? Well, you get the notes. I'm drunk, too. Um, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. We said, <laughs> whoo. So, Okay. Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. We talked about what is hell like <laughs> last week, okay? We, we talked about what is hell like. We say it's a place of flames and torment. There are pits of darkness. It's a prison. And then we ended on Isaiah 514. Let's go back over to Isaiah 514 as we close out uh, what is hell like. Then we're going to discuss who's going to be in hell. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 14, NASB, says, Therefore hell, or Sheol, has enlarged its throat and opened its mouth without measure, and opened its mouth without measure, and Jerusalem, splendor and multitude, her uh, divine reverie, and the jubilant within her descend into it. So we talked last week about hell was created for the devils and his angels, but because so many people are siding with Satan, they're going to hell. And so therefore, hell is enlarging itself. It's not the same size it was when God created it. I want you to think about that. God created hell to certain dimensions that would accommodate the devil and the fallen angels, but because so many people are choosing to go to hell, it is enlarging itself meaning that it is making room for all the souls that are descending down in it. What is hell like? It's, it's enlarging, amen? amen? Go to Revelation 19 and 20. We're still talking about what is hell like. Revelation 19, verse 20. When you have it, say, I have it. Listen to this. And the beast was seized... And with him the false prophet, who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. Now, the original word for brimstone is suffer. So, hell burns with suffer. It's a, anybody ever smelt suffer? Yeah. It, it doesn't smell good. A lot of people that's in the occult that work on uh, witchcraft, you'll suffer uh, to do all kind of demonic stuff uh, to people. And so hell burns with suffer. So on top of all the torment we talked about last week, there's a smell. Suffer burns your, your nose. It makes your eyes watery. Uh, a couple of years ago, they were burning something at a house over there, and it, it, the, the smoke filled this whole area. And if you went outside, your eyes began to burn. Your nose began to run. I had to call the fire department. And they said it was smoke bombs, but that wasn't no, no smoke bomb. That was, that was suffer that was in the atmosphere. So hell not only burns with fire, there's suffer that's in hell. So when, let, let me just take my time. When you talk to people that's in the church and they tell you to do certain stuff that you don't find in the word, 
you better not do it. They telling you to take salt water bath. If you're going to take a salt water bath, do it because you're getting the soreness out. Put some Epsom salt in there. But you're not taking no salt water bath to get rid of no demons. Salt don't get rid of demons. It kills snails, but it don't do nothing for demons. And so what, what I found is a lot of people in the church are doing demonic stuff and then they're wondering why they're being attacked by the devil or the devil has an entry into their lives. Church people burning sage. Yeah. I'm purifying the atmosphere. Yeah. What, what, what? The devil, the Bible says that Satan can't cast out Satan. Okay. Do you realize that when you burn sage, you're attracting spirits? You're not getting real. You can't get rid of demons with, with sage. If that was the case, Jesus didn't have to come. And so you got people in the church, believers, they may mean well, but they deceive. They're going through the house with sage. My wife was watching a, a show on HGTV. I ain't going to call the name of it. And, and the young lady that designs the houses and stuff, before they got in there good, she had sage going through the house. It's demonic. It is occultic. Yeah. And if you've done that, you better repent and renounce that because you open a door yeah. for the enemy to have access to your house yeah. and your life. Yeah. We, ain't, we ain't putting no salt down at our front door and putting salt around the house and pepper down and all this crazy demonic witchcraft yeah. that some of our parents got into yeah. because they were always going to see a man. They were going to see the devil yeah. coming back doing that stuff. Yeah. And so I, I hear this. Well, that was my parent. I, listen, anything that your parents did follows you. Yeah. Do you realize there are a lot of people that are sick and the doctors can't identify what it is? But it's because of something. It is because of curses. And it's because of covenants that the family made with the devil. There are blood covenants, there are vow covenants, there are secret oaths that our family members made with the occultic realm. They didn't know it to the extent that we know it. And so that gave that. Remember in the Bible in Matthew when it says when a spirit is cast out, it walks through dry places seeking rest. And when it doesn't find any, it say, I will return to my house from whence I came. And they say, if it comes and find it clean, swept, and garnered, it brings seven more spirits. And they're more wicked than that first one. And so now this person's state is worse. If you study that out in the Greek, that's talking about when that spirit say, I will return back to my house, it said, I will return back to my family. It is generational curses. It is curses that come through the bloodline. And when he comes back, he brings more. So that person is worse than they were. So there are certain things that follow us through the bloodline. You may not know everything that your family got into, but you need to renounce stuff that come to your mind. Listen, I didn't know a certain hierarchy of my family because they was a little godly person. I thought they was loving the Lord, preacher of the gospel. And I didn't know they were an Eastern star until I went to the funeral. And I seen all of this stuff up in there. I was like, hold up, not, yes. Not realizing that that, that person opened a door for those spirits to come through to a, attack other people in the family. You have to renounce that stuff. There are a lot of people sick because their family members were in, in a cult. The Masons is in a cult. Yeah. Eastern Star is in a cult. Yeah. I know y'all don't want to hear this. Sororities and fraternities are cults. Yeah. Why? You have to make secret vows. Yeah. And the Bible say don't make secret vows. Yeah. You, you, uh, you pledge your allegiance to an organization above God. And then people, I'm a proud Christian, but you don't have the Holy Spirit because he would have told you to renounce that. And so people that have ancestors that's either in it or was in it, it's a lot of sickness that comes into those families until somebody renounces that stuff and break them curses. You can't use the demonic to fight the demonic. Just burn the sage. It'll get rid of them. You just open up yourself up for something worse. 
Y'all saw the story on the news where when it froze a couple of weeks ago and the people had the candles trying to thaw the pipes out in the house and set the whole house on fire. You're trying to use something that's going to end up burning the whole house down. And see, church people get mad when you say this. They get, they get angry at you. I ain't in no call. Yes, you are. You have pledged your loyalty to a secret society with a private oath that has given the devil access to your life. And you can get mad if you want to. You will, be, you will be sick and you will be going through cycles the rest of your life until you renounce it. We talked when I first met you, Sister Lynn, about indigenous uh, people, Indians. That the different practices that they were into. I mean, a lot of demonic stuff, and that stuff comes through the bloodline. She had to renounce a lot of that stuff to get free. I'm not going to go too deep with that. A lot of us, in, we, we start to embrace this African stuff. These African artifacts and all of this African movement, not realizing that you better research what you're embracing because it might have some devils attached to it. I don't have no African artwork in my house. Ain't no little statue of no man with no little spear. I don't have it. I'm not, I'm not embracing things that will give the devil access to my life. I fight too hard to keep my life clean and to keep stuff out. Somebody went, on a, went out, of, out of the country um, on vacation one year, and they brought me something back they had made for me on vacation. And it was cute, but the more I, I held it, the Holy Spirit said, get rid of that thing. Yeah. I said, well, it's just, it's, he said, get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't about what it is, the spirit of the person that made it. Because spirits are transferable. I don't believe that. I'm not going to deviate from my teaching. Romans said they began to worship created things above the creator. Things carved with wood and began to worship all of these different things. It wasn't that it was just carved out of wood. There's a spirit that is attached to it. Okay, okay. So, so it burns with fire and brimstone. You better not eat everybody cooking. I'm telling you, some, some of y'all just greedy. You better not eat, you better not eat everybody cooking because some people put something in there. I could tell y'all some stories, but y'all would think I'm crazy, so I'm not going to tell you. Everybody ain't mature enough for this. They ain't mature enough. I, I, ain't, I know you ain't mature enough. I ain't even going to tell you. You, 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 you would be putting your finger up, walking out like he done went too far. <laughs> I don't believe that. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Praise the Lord. So, all right now. Jude, chapter 1, verse 7. We're talking about, this is the last scripture. What is hell like? You know, people say they can handle it. But you start telling them, Sister Potts, they start saying, I knew something. They was off. I do. I'm not off. The spirit realm is real. The spirit realm is real. I, I, I'll say this. If you think I'm crazy, you, the, the Lord, the Lord, no, I'm not. But uh, my, my sister, grandmother, y'all never met my oldest sister. I got a sister older than me. Her grandmother, somebody put something in her food. And she started feeling something scratch. Inside her stomach, she had to drink milk for it to calm down. And one day she went to the restroom to use the restroom. Kittens came out of her because somebody had put something on her through her food. I told you y'all couldn't handle it. This pastor gives this, this story in Africa. This lady hangs her, her dress on the, the clothesline. 
Somebody need to hear this. And she goes and look for it and can't find it. But somebody in the witchcraft made it dissolve and put it in her water. Now keep listening. So she drunk the water. The lady was expecting. So when she went to give birth, the dress came out wrapped around the child's neck. The devil was trying to kill the child. That's all y'all can handle for today. Jude 1 and 7. So y'all ain't going to let that go, so I can't give you no more. Jude, Jude 1 and 7. People astro project. They, they leave their bodies and they go. That's new age, but it's, it's some church devils doing it too. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Anybody ever heard of astro projection where people project, they, they leave their body? They sit down and go in a trance and their, their spirit walks out of their body. And the cults go and torment and harass believers because believers don't have no discernment. <laughs> Y'all don't believe that. This ain't no story. This is my life here. My wife and my life. I was at work one day. I don't even know if Junior was born. And I was in the word and prayer at work and the Lord said, call your house. Something that's going on. And so I called my house. I say, I say, honey, everything all right? I say, the Lord said some stuff. She was terrified. She said, the cabinets are opening and closing by themselves in the kitchen. This certain bishop, she said, he walked into the kitchen, into the living room in his spirit, not his body, his spirit, and looked at me. And he was causing this demonic activity to go on in my house because come to find out he was a wizard perpetrating as a bishop. And so when I went home, I said, God, I know how to get rid of the devil. I got authority, but how do you deal with human spirits? And he said, get rid of everything that is connected to that church that is in this house. Envelope, anything, I don't care if it's a thread, get rid of everything. Throw it outside in the trash. Then anoint this house. Go around this whole apartment, anoint the whole perimeter of it. And then you come in here and I teach you what to pray to renounce any attachments and soul ties, anything that is connected that gives people or demons access to our house, our life. This stuff is real. I picked it up in the spirit at work. I wasn't nobody minister, nobody pastor. I was just Brother Jeff loving the Lord, but I picked it up. The Lord showed it to me because the, the demonic realm is real and the demonic realm uses people. They, that's very common in New Age, yeah. leaving their bodies. But the, the downside, some of them don't make it back to their bodies, they die. Yeah. Because God did not create you to be traveling outside your body because then you become illegal. Yeah. Because you're illegal because you have an earth suit. Yeah. I don't, this, is, this is this somebody need this today because somebody in here been experiencing some strange stuff and you don't even know what's what's been going on. Do you need to hear this? You, that's why you got to make sure that you don't have any doors open. So when something do arise, you can deal with it in the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit because you don't you didn't give it access. But when you got doors open, you can't rebuke a devil you invited. You know, it was said of old that a vampire couldn't go in people's houses unless they invited them in. They would stand right outside. They couldn't even come over the threshold. And as long as they say a person didn't invite them in, they couldn't come in. But the minute you say, come on in and have a glass, of you gave them access. Somebody say, well, vampire is not real. Y'all, I told you y'all can't handle this. The occultic realm is real. You cannot believe in God and angels and, and the good and not believe that there is a, a demonic side, that there is another side of this. <laughs> I told y'all couldn't handle it. Y'all y'all can't handle this. What about werewolves? They real too. Matter of fact, the devil uses 
werewolves and, 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 and vampires to punish people that disobey him. Okay, I'm going to get off of it. How you know all that 35 years of studying, 35 years of being in God's presence, having a healing and deliverance ministry, you got to notice what you're dealing with. Because most sickness is tied to a demon. And a lot of behaviors is not psychotic, it's demonic. And what we're doing is counseling demons and trying to cast out stuff that need counseling. But the church we got today, the seeker-friendly church, they just want to make everybody happy and don't come against anything. They don't cast out devils. They don't pray for the sick. They don't do any of the stuff that we do because they want numbers instead of souls getting into heaven. Let me, let me at least finish this part here. Jude 1 and 7, are you there? June says, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they in the same way as these indulged in gross immorality and went out the strange flesh, say strange flesh, and are exhibited as an example in uh, undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. So Jude, the brother of Jesus, said that it is eternal fire that will punish all evildoers. Eternal fire that will punish all evil doers. So you have to ask yourself, what did we discuss weeks ago was an evil doer? It is a person that violates God's word. It is a person that does not live according to the standards of God's word. They are considered based on the Bible and God an evil doer. Now, I didn't say they didn't do good stuff. Because we got a lot of people that say, well, they mean well or they, they do good stuff. They give to charity and organizations. They volunteer. Do you realize most people in a cult does that? Let me help you out. Most pedophiles volunteer as coaches, Boy Scout leaders. They do stuff to get close to people. So you can't be moved by what people do or what they give. Even pastors do it. Molest the, the young people and the older people. Yeah. You got some of them just nasty. Yeah. So you, you can't say they are a good person based on what? What I perceive? Because people can, they can trick you out. You know, people can juke you. Hey, you're thinking something that's not there, but, but it's based on what did God say? God say that a wicked person is a person that refuses to live their lives according to the word. It doesn't matter how often you come to church. Church does not make you righteous. The Bible says we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So as long as I'm in Christ, I'm righteous. And if I'm in Christ, I'm not going to have certain behaviors. I'm not going to do the stuff I used to do. Why? Because then I was in the world, but now I'm in Christ. Let's talk about who's going to be in hell. I got some time today. Go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. We just finished up what is hell like. Now we're going to talk about who's going to be in hell because you might be thinking, I'm not going to hell. Well, let's just see. Let's let the Bible speak. Right? Listen, you have to have a biblical worldview, meaning that it, the way you view the world has to be viewed through the lens of the word. You can't just see the world the way you want to see it. And you can't just make up stuff as you go. What does the word of God say? Are you over there in Revelation chapter 20 verse 15? Listen to this. And anyone's, who? It didn't say Psalms, did it? Anyone's name was not found written in the book of life. He was thrown into the lake of fire. God has books. Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www. Dot wordlifecenter.org or you may also send a seed offering to post office box 293 
Annapolis, North Carolina, 28082. The word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting Word Life Center International. Demon, so really 11. Yeah. And then he looks at them. He didn't say, please don't leave. Do you want me to preach something else? You want me to change my message and preach something good about your good life? No, he looked at them, and I like to put it in JBS translation. He, he looked at them. He said, y'all can step too. He said, y'all want to step? Peter said, no, Lord. He said, you're the one that have the words of eternal life. Where are we going to go? Jesus said, okay, I can work with this group. And he used those 11 men to turn the world upside down. 11 men. He didn't need a mega church. He needed some people that was committed and sold out. So Jesus wasn't crying because they left. He let them go. Some of you need to stop shedding tears over people that don't want to walk with God like you want to walk with God. Well, they, what, what if they go to hell? What if they go to hell? That ain't going to stop me from getting in heaven. And I ain't going to know they're in hell because he said he's going to wipe all tears from their eyes. From the author of Occupy comes a new bestseller, Capacity. The ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.